All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Time Management with the 411. Thanks for joining me. I'm excited to talk to you about this tool and help you take a look at how we're managing your time and, and really just um, offer some support. I think more than ever, this is a great time for us to master how we use um, our day to remain productive and to continue to see results. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that can affect us when we start working from home. It's a different environment for some of us. Um, the home environment itself can be challenging at times. So being clear on how you want to use your time, I think, uh, would be probably very helpful to you right now, which is why I wanted to do this class. So as um, we get into conversations, feel free to unmute yourself and share your um, thoughts or ideas with me. Uh, there is a chat function here, and you can also throw questions uh, up to me in the chat so that I can, um, you know, you can feel like you're participating. So right now I'm going to ask um, if you would take yourself off mute and perhaps you could share your thoughts with me on this question. Um, and it, we'll have a little fun with this. If your worst time management habit came to life as a movie villain, who would it be? <laughs> who wants to share theirs with me? Think about some of your time management habits or challenges, and what would you name that movie villain? Can't think too creatively this morning? <laughs> no. How many of you would say your movie villain would be the time bandit? If you raise your hand and you're not on camera, I can't tell what you're doing. So come on camera, don't be shy. So, yeah. So Time Bandit, how many of you would say yes to that one? Yeah? Yes. Please? Okay. Um, how about, um, oh gosh, let's see. Would anyone claim uh, something like um, the runaway rascal? <laughs> like your day just gets away from you, you know? So what are some of... Yeah, so what are some of, you know, the worst time management habits that you feel you're, you're suffering with right now? So what would they be? Louise, you agreed to the time band, and do you feel like sometimes, you know, your time is stolen from you? I think it's stolen. I think it could be derailed by uh, interruptions where uh, you get sidetracked or you try, you know, you're, you're doing one thing and you know you're sitting at your computer doing one thing and then all of a sudden you know something pops up and you say oh let me take care of that mm -hmm. you know so I think it's the interruptions that uh, get in the way okay so the interruptions so we're going to talk about this so let's isolate something so everyone can agree there are interruptions that show up for all of us correct yes it's whether or mm -hmm. not you allow the interruption to then become the distraction mm -hmm. you know because we can say to the interruption, I'm really doing my, my one thing right now. Can you come back to me? So it may be that the interruption becomes a distraction because we allow that. Anyone else want to share? What are some of your uh, challenges when it comes to managing your time? Why are you here today? What are you hoping to get out of this? Since we're working from home, hi, it's Linda, just seeing, is there something I can learn until we can get back to some sort of normalcy? I do okay. miss my office, I'm not going to lie. Okay, so you're, are you experiencing something different right now working from home? Yeah, I get up to do laundry a lot where I don't do that in the office. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we yeah, kidding? Yeah, I'm like, oh, awesome. shit, I got to do laundry, I got to clean the house. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I hope that I'm you're- cooking. Yeah, so take notes, everyone, and write this down. It's not about managing time. It's about managing myself. It's not about managing my time. It's about managing myself. So I get that. And I think what has to happen, Linda, and I'm sure you're not the only one, we have to get into a mindset that says, I'm treating my day no differently than I would if I was working in the office. 
And so if you can't get up and go do your laundry when you're sitting in uh, at 10 Esquire, you, you just have to tell yourself you can't do it now. So it's about creating boundaries and it's about understanding, you know, the, the choices that you make and how they make you. Um, anyone else want to share a challenge that they're having? Okay. All right, let's get right into it. I'm going to skip some of this because this is part of a traditional uh, class uh, presentation. Um, but what we're going to do is get into the perspective around time management. I already shared with you the first thing is that you're not managing time, you're managing your behavior. So that's another clarity, uh, cl clarifying statement to write down that you're, you're really managing your behavior and how you can take control back of your time. We'll talk about setting goals and having some accountability around that. We'll get right into the 411, how to create it and how to implement it and then put it all together within the next 50 minutes. Sound good? All right. So let's go right into um, some objectives here around uh, gaining perspective. So we talked about this interestingly enough yesterday, if you were with me on the six personal perspectives, funny how things show up again, right? So in, in understanding of how to manage your behavior and your decisions when it comes to how you use your time, the first thing that you really have to do is understand what matters most. So in order for you to have that focus, you need to be clear about your goals and then you need to be clear about your priorities. And your priorities are what we call the big rocks. Uh, they, we, uh, that is what we call in your 20%. If you're not clear about your goals and if you are not clear about your goals and you can't be clear about what is in your 20% or your priority, do you think it is easy or difficult to always manage the choices you make around how to use your time? Difficult. Why? Because we don't have the clarity of, of really what you're focusing on. Yeah. You really can't make good decisions around it because you're not really sure where those actions line up. Mm -hmm. And I think what happens is we start to determine or, or assume that every action or activity is equally important and it, it just isn't. There are some things that really require your attention and require priority in the sense that we have to do those things first. And we would have to know clearly what the goals are in order for us to identify the big rocks. And also in doing so, we talked about this yesterday in the six personal perspectives, we need to know how to move from being entrepreneurial or doing what comes easy and natural to being much more purposeful. So write that down. You have to know how to move from what comes natural or easy to doing things more purposefully. So what we're describing really is the 80-20 principle. And it's knowing that there is this um, predictable imbalance to things in our world. So in other words, 80% of your results can come from focusing on 20% of your activities or 20% of your activities can bring 80% of your results. So what this diagram is showing is when you put a lot of energy or action into your 80% stuff, it diminishes your results dramatically. But when you put your energy into fewer things, but those fewer things are much more important or have a higher level of priority, we see that we can get 80% of the results that we seek. So really this is working smarter rather than harder. So the first thing you have to understand, and it will be a little different for everyone, is what's in your 20%. When you stay focused on your 20%, you will get your results in a much faster and in a much bigger way. Any questions on that or comments? Just unmute. Okay. Why don't people live by this principle? Because it's counterintuitive, right? Does, how many of you can agree it seems a little weird or off to say that the fewer 
of those items on my list have a bigger impact in my results? Sounds a little weird, right? Because a lot of us are trained to think that we have to check a lot of boxes off. We have to create these big lists and check them all off and feel like, you know, we, we accomplished so much in a day. Yet, if a lot of those things are minutia or 80% items, there is no impact in completing them. You're just getting a task done, but there's no impact. So I love Linda's example about doing laundry. That is clearly an 80% item. Actually, we might even argue it's not, it's not even on the list because it shouldn't be happening during work time. Um, there's no impact other than having clean laundry, but you can have clean laundry at seven o'clock tonight or Saturday morning. It doesn't have to be right now. What does have to be right now are the 20% items that really are a part of your getting to your goals for your business. And as I said yesterday, this principle applies to all aspects of your life. So any part of your life that you're looking to create goals and see results in, this 80-20 rule is true. There's always going to be a, a shorter list of things in that 20% that when you focus on them first will bring you much further in your results. Questions, challenges, anybody have anything they want to say on that? I'm sure this is not the first time you're hearing it. Um, I see we have a lot more people on the call. Welcome. Um, so any thoughts on that? Okay. Feel free to let me know if you have a question or uh, put a question in the chat. So basically, um, as we've said, every one of us, sometimes we think that everything in life is balanced. Everything is at a 50-50 and truly it's not. Um, oh, great, Aaron. Thanks. I just saw, I just saw your note and that would be awesome if you could help me with the chat. Um, I appreciate that. And Joe Rubio, I see you said one of your challenges is working at home with the kids. So we'll talk about some of that too. Um, and I'll say this, your children need structure too. You know, I think one of the things that is important is to help everyone in your household right now figure out what their 20% their is and give everyone an opportunity to kind of work through their own list of things. And, um, you know, it's a conversation when you're working at home with the kids or any other family member. It's just a conversation about, you know, what your expectations are and what you want to be able to focus on right now what your calendar or schedule needs to look like. Um, and, you know, maybe you have to build in like with the kids, some break times. So you may not be able to work a straight six or eight hours, but you can work for two hours and give your child or children something to do during that time, go back to them, maybe make lunch and then go back. So I think it's important that right now during this time, everyone has to really accept the fact that yes, you can still focus on your, your business and you can still be productive, but it's gonna look different. It may not flow the way you're used to. And we just, we have to accept it and not resist it. All right, so at, this is what we've been talking about. In order for you to get ready to do your 411, you have to know right now what your big rocks are. So your big rocks are those big goals that you have, like let's say for the whole year. So right now, uh, if you have something to take notes with, I want you to jot down, what are your big goals for this year? If you're an agent, I'm assuming that your goals are probably gonna be around uh, income and or a certain number of closed transactions or dollar volume sold. So write those numbers down. Um, for other, others in the group, it could be around other results in the business. Like with Louise, it might be about company dollar or owner profit really and uh, recruiting, growth, you know, that kind of thing. But define your big rocks. Anna, we have a question Yeah, great. Um, from Lori McDermott. So when you work an outside job that takes up eight plus hours of your day, what's the best way to focus on real estate so that the time you do have, you're not all over the place trying to identify your 20%? Great question. So Lori, I can tell you that for many years, I worked a full-time job and I ran a, a pretty big business. Um, I did that for 17 years while we were raising our kids. So anything I share with you guys is, is actually stuff I've done. So I totally relate to uh, you and Joe uh, who've asked questions so far. So the first thing is you have to know what 
time you have allotted for your real estate business. So the same way that you would report to work at another job, what does that schedule look like? So, you know, you get to choose, are you going to work a few hours on, you know, several days during the week after work? Are you going to work a certain number of hours on Saturday and or Sunday? So the first step is you have to create a schedule, just like you were going to report to a second job. What do those hours look like? And then you create your goals. And I think that for all of you on the call, remember when setting goals, you have to use an acronym. Um, you have to use the SMART acronym, which means that your goals are specific and very clear, but they also have to be measurable, which is how much by when, and they have to be attainable. The R, by the way, in SMART is realistic. So for you, Lori, you have to be clear, you know, what can you accomplish realistically in doing this business part-time, right? So of course, it doesn't mean that you can't be successful, you can't earn income, but you may not be able to create a very big income goal if you just don't have the right amount of time to put into it. So once you know what that schedule looks like, identify the goal, and from there, you should be clear about what the 20% is then. And just like anyone else, that has to come first. Well, thank you. But I guess the other thing I wanted to ask was when you know that you have, say, X amount of time each day that you have, you can allot to this. And there's so much training that's always ongoing because we evolve as a company and as a, an industry to try to keep up with both. So, I mean, what would be your, your I guess, advice as to how to balance those things that you're going to be doing for lead gen against mm -hmm. keeping up with the training and the, and the zoom meetings mm -hmm. and, and sure. everything that goes on. Yep. Yeah, good. No, great. So again, we talked about this yesterday in the first six personal perspectives, you have to be learning based in order to sharpen your tools and skill set. yet it has to be for you to be able to immediately implement and, and create action in your business. So there has to be a balance of the two. Um, I would say you have to know clearly, I mean, a lot of the classes we offer are, are interesting and certainly have value. I think that you have to be clear about what you need most. So in other words, if um, struggling with time is, is an issue, then you did the right thing by being on this call. Um, because that, that time that you invest right now in this class when you can implement what we're talking about, it's going to work to your advantage going forward. So it was a good investment. But let's say that you um, have the option of taking a class on, on uh, I don't know, social media marketing, and you feel like you have a good handle on that. Well, maybe because you have limited time, you choose not to do that one, right? Because you have to find the balance between getting the knowledge you need and then implementing it. So it's just you have to build it to scale. So if you have four hours compared to someone who has eight hours, you've got to still look at the same ratio. You know, maybe 70% uh, of your time is spent working, you know, in your business, lead generating and, and building that business. And 30% is spent in class or taking classes. So 30% of your time is going to equal to, you know, less hours, but it's still that same ratio. Does that, did that help? Yes, it did. Thank you. I know for myself, I'm pretty much, you know, well, narrowing it down to say command, um, because that's something that that will help. Uh, you know, well, it's a necessary, it's necessary, but it also is the more I the better I am in command, the better I can command my business. Um, right. And um, document anything to do with documents and DocuSign mm -hmm. and because do, again the better I better I have a handle on all of that then the better I I don't have to focus solely yeah. on that yeah that, I, no you're welcome and that really relates to the slide you're looking at right now everyone this is what we mean moving from E to P so anything that's going to help you get more purposeful anything that's going to help you take control and see bigger results in your business would be where you want to put your focus right because this is doing what comes naturally but we know that that can only help us grow our business so long until we hit that ceiling of achievement and play that yo-yo game so when we get more purposeful and 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 really you know apply systems and models and have that focus 
uh, that's when we break through. So any class or anything that you can spend your time on that's helping you get more purposeful, you know, implementing systems and models, getting education, having accountability, working with a coach, that would be, that would be part of your 20% because it's creating a pathway for you to see bigger results. All right, any other questions about uh, anything we've talked about so far or any other ahas? So I touched on this already, uh, SMART goals. Uh, basically, you need to embrace the fact that goal, goal setters and goal achievers are living bigger lives. And if you are here to really set your sights on achieving at a higher level and wanting to see your income grow from that, your credibility, your capacity for business and leadership, then it's really got to start with setting goals and knowing that it is, it is an end point. It's a very clear and specific goal. It is not something open-ended. Um, and that acronym using the word SMART will help you to, to set those goals. Here it is. So it's about working smarter by creating a goal that's very specific, measurable. So here they're using action-oriented. Most of the time we hear uh, when we use the SMART acronym that A is attainable, which, which can relate to being action-oriented. So what that means is that whatever you set as a goal is something that you have the capacity to, to accomplish. So you have to know that your action plan and your capacity is going to get you there. So that's where the attainable comes in. It has to be realistic, right? So if you are working part-time and you tell me that you're going to earn a million dollars in GCI this coming year, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions around the, you know, actions you're going to have and how realistic that is. I'm not going to say it's not possible. Maybe you can sell some pretty high-end property, but yet we have to look at that, right? So, um, and then time bound means how much by when there's, there's an end in sight by that as well. Um, any questions on that acronym, setting SMART goals? Okay. So when we look at creating a 411, you wanna be able to understand, you know, where your goal categories might lie. So in other words, for those of you who created, you know, wrote down some goals, you might have to look at how you're going to get there. So some goal categories might revolve around lead generation. It might revolve around education. It might revolve around uh, developing leverage or a team. Okay. So when we go through the 411 tool, some of your actions are going to fall into those different categories. Does that make sense? Any questions or, or, or need for clarity on that? Okay, we'll go on. So let's just talk about accountability because that's an important part of the 411 tool. When I show you how to fill out the 401 in a couple minutes, um, that's just part of the process. What makes that process really work for you is being able to share it with someone else. So this is a really crucial part of hitting your goals. And a lot of us who are very independent and um, type A personalities or overachievers, a lot of us, and the reason why we're in real estate, um, also makes us the person who sometimes doesn't like the accountability. We try to push it off. Um, but that's because we don't understand it and we choose to look at it as some kind of punitive or pressure uh, activity. And it's not. It is really the secret sauce to being successful. Accountability is a partnership. And it's your opportunity to report activities and your progress to someone else. And that person agrees to support you. And that person agrees to be committed to you in terms of, of not being afraid to ask you why you might not be on track, to give you ideas to get back on track, to uh, challenge you a little bit when you need to be challenged, and to reward or, or uh, you know, support you when you are. It always write this down, accountability always improves imp uh, performance. Accountability always improves performance. When you know you have that accountability 
session or appointment with someone, you will look at your time differently. You will look at how you use your time differently. You will look at your activities differently because you know you have someone who's waiting to see results, right? Does that make sense? So even if at first, I say this to people all the time, whether I'm coaching them or I become your accountability partner, even if you are on point for nothing less then because you don't want to have to face me and say, I didn't do it. It doesn't matter. It's building a habit, right? It's building good habits so that you are then going to use your time differently and get the um, results that you're looking for. And, and very quickly, it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't, your motive changes. It's not about just wanting to have something good to report. Your motive and motivation really becomes I'm seeing results and I want, I want more of that. So that's what's, what's valuable about accountability. So you, you need to really find that accountability partner. Uh, and, and choosing that partner is important because you want someone who can understand what it is that you need to accomplish and who's willing to really hold your feet to the fire when necessary. So sometimes a spouse and, a, and a, a partner isn't always the greatest accountability partner. They, they may let you off the hook too easy, right? Um, and they may not understand what is involved in, in getting to your goal. So choosing the right accountability partner is definitely important. Any questions on that or thoughts on that? Awesome. Remember, you can use the chat too, the chat box. Okay. Just actually, why don't you all go into your chat box right now and, and answer this question for me. Yes or no, you uh, use the 411 tool now, yes or no. Just see who's in the group here. If you go to the bottom of your screen, there's an orange box there that says chat. Yes, Rocia, working with one of the productivity coaches would be a great idea. You can work with Ann Margaret in your office. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, so Linda, I love you, but I'm going to take your answer as a no. <laughs> 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 Linda wrote, kind, I have goals. Of course you have goals, but yet I'm asking if you use the 411, the actual form. So many of you have not. Oh, then no, okay. No, okay. All right. So here we go. Are we ready? We're going to get right into it right now. Okay. Okay. So the 411 stands for four weeks, one month, one year. I didn't design it. That's what it is. Four weeks, one month, one year. So you're kind of working up backwards, right? What's interesting about the 4-in-1 is I, I've used this format for a very long time. I just didn't know that I could call it a 4 one until I came to Keller Williams. As someone who's always been in sales, I'm very goal-oriented. So what I would do is I would create my goal, right? That's the one-year goal, whatever that is. And I would work backwards from there to what I needed to do right now. And that's what this really does. In creating a 4 one we remember we talked about some categories. So there are, there are job goals, right? So the job goals, so if you're a realtor, that is, those are the goals that are around your daily activities, the job of being a real estate agent. And then we have business goals, right? So we are, we're gonna have that as a separate category. And those are activities that get you to those bigger, visions and bigger numbers like your overall income goals your overall structure of your business so so the job goals are like the business of being a real estate agent you know how many transactions you want to close and your business goals might be more on a broader scale like you know when we look at your income goal it might take into account investments as well as your real estate transactions profit share earnings uh, team perhaps. All right. And then we have our personal finance goals. I don't know if I really need to explain that. And then we have personal life goals, right? Now those could be more like personal development goals. Maybe you want to learn a new skill. You want to go to certain classes. You want to get a certification. 
um, you want to travel somewhere, you, you want to um, run a marathon, you know, that kind of stuff. Any questions so far? So if you like that idea, and wow, this is old year 2005, I didn't realize that, but I'll, this is timeless stuff, people. It's all good. Uh, for those of you who like the idea of tracking all of that, you could create a 411 with those four columns and get really laser focused. Most of us who are doing a 411 right now, and we should be doing it this way, we should be looking at our business goals and our personal goals. Um, if you want to get, like I said, more granular and you want to break it down into jobs and, and then the personal finance, that's fine. Notice that for the annual goals, there is no more than two up here. So that's really intentional because you want this to be a focus tool where you go, for, you, you want this tool to help you chunk down. So your, your goals at the top are broad. They're specific though, but it's broad. You know, it's a big vision goal. And then as you get into it more and more, it gets more specific. Um, you want this to be attainable, remember. So how many different goals could you possibly have in every category, right? That two is enough. And I think that's another thing that's a little counterintuitive. We don't, we don't feel like that is enough, but it is. Because if it's a big enough goal, then it's gonna have an impact in your life. It's gonna be profound if you accomplish it, right? So that's another thing, by the way, uh, if you wanna jot this down. Um, oh gosh, his name just went right out of my head. Where's his book on my shelf? This is real live TV, people. Jack Canfield. Uh, Jack Canfield writes in his book, The Success Principles, uh, that you, when you create goals, they should be BHAGs, B-H-A-G, big, hairy, audacious goals, big, hairy, audacious goals. In other words, your goal should move you forward. This is not about staying the same. This is not about small incremental change. This is attainable and realistic, but come on, let's, let's go for something that is going to change our world, right? So the, the first part of the forum and one is writing down those annual goals, which you might already have done so when I asked you a few minutes ago to jot some things down. That's right, big, hairy, audacious goals. Thanks, Aaron. And you're going to then break it down into monthly goals. So this is the second part of the, of the form. First part at the top is your annual goal. And then we go into the second uh, section and it's your monthly goal and it's specific for the month that you're in. The reason why the 401 tool works is because it is an at the moment snapshot of what you need to work on in order to get to your annual goals. So basically you're going to do 12 of these in a year. And I save all of my 411s. Um, you can do these online and I save them as a PDF. And I have different folders saved in my computer. Um, January, I, you know, and, and, and I overwrite them each week. So there's just one document in there, the whole, the whole month is done. January, and then I save, you know, each month. And that gives me an opportunity to go back and reflect and see, you know, where am I and how have I been doing? So now you're into the month. So like right now, you would probably start working on your, your 411 for April. So what do you need to accomplish in the month of April that will help you get closer to your goals? Now, when you create a goal for the year, let's say, I'm gonna do some easy math. Let's say that you have a goal of $120,000 in GCI. That doesn't necessarily mean when you come in here that your monthly income goal is $10,000. I do the math quick in my head. Uh, it's, it's not, that's not how this works because unless you have built a system, which some agents have, where you have enough business volume coming in and you have you know, your, your income sitting in, in, let's say a operating account, and you just draw down from it the same amount every month, like you put yourself on a payroll, uh, then that's different. But you know, 
not all of you are at that point, I don't think. So whatever is happening in that month really needs to reflect, or I should, I'm sorry, whatever you put down as your goals for the month is, is reflecting what is really happening around you at that time. So you might wanna take into account seasonality. You might wanna take into account the reality of the situation we're in right now. The 411 that you create in April is different than the 411 you might've created in March. And this is why you can't do it ahead of time, right? Because you need to wait to see what is happening in your world at that moment. Now, the monthly goals are still kind of short. Here they, they show you two, maybe it's three or four at, at best. Okay, but it's still, it's, it's very succinct for what you want to accomplish. What are your questions before I move on? My dog. <laughs> any, any questions so far? Anna, can you just repeat the difference between job and business? Because that's something that has always stumped me a little bit. Sure. So I'll use the example of a real estate agent, right? So as a realtor, especially, you know, at Keller Williams, you are running your own business. All right. And there are functions and goals of that business that are, are separate from what needs to be done as, as an agent in terms of the job of being a real estate agent. So in other words, I'm sorry about that. So in other words, um, if, I was, if I'm a real estate agent and I grow a team and I create a big team and leverage that team, I could leverage myself right out of the job of being a real estate agent, right? So that means I'm not going on showings, I'm not listing property, I'm not maybe even negotiating. I have other people doing that, but I'm running the business still. So that's where I'm focused on creating budgets and marketing plans and uh, leading my team and accountability and, and training and hiring and whatever else comes with running a business. Think about that same relationship even now as one agent, right? There are times and there are activities that you need to do and spend time on when you're working as a real estate agent, marketing, prospecting, listing homes, working with buyers, negotiating deals, going to the closing, all that stuff, right? Doing your paperwork, transaction coordinating. That's the job part of what you do. But when you step out of that and you're doing your business planning and working your budget and maybe even creating a marketing plan and uh, hiring people and maybe even creating investment opportunities or other things, that's your overall business. So that's what the goals and the activities are, are in that part of what you do. Great. Does thank that you. help? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay. And for some of us, like maybe for you, Aaron, in, in your position on the R leadership team, you know, you, you might only need the job category, not necessarily the business category. All righty. Now we get into the weekly goals. So the monthly goals and now the weekly goals, these are all actions. I want you to make that note. When you get specific about the monthly goals and the weekly goals, these are the actions, the activities you're going to do to get results. So on the 401, you have a, a column for each week of the month, and you're going to do this one week at a time. You are not filling this out for the whole month. Why not? Why wouldn't you do that? Talk to me. Because as you go forward in each week, you're, you have accomplishments and then you take it to the next, you may take that function to the next level. If it's a learning curve, you may have done X amount towards that one goal and mm -hmm. then next week you have to add to that or, sure. or the job is done. Yeah, sure. Anyone else have something to share? Thanks, Louise. You may not also get to something and you may need to carry it over. Yes, that's right. Thanks, Aaron. Anything else? How about opportunities show up all the time? See, I think like that, right? Let's say I get some, some unforeseen opportunity 
uh, and I decide that I'm going to, I'm going to pursue it. So now next week I have to, you know, put some, some things here in place to accomplish that goal. Um, it, it, the week, the weeks or the month might start rolling out in a bigger way than I thought. Um, how about like some pandemic shows up and shuts me into my house? <laughs> Doesn't shut me down, but it shuts me in my house. So now suddenly I have, you know, the things I did last week look different, right? So, so that's why we always want to be um, creating activities and goals around what is happening around us. We want it to be very spontaneous because we want to, we want to face the challenges. We want to rise to the occasion of opportunities. We want to meet the demands of whatever is going on. That's, that's why we do it one week at a time. So what my habit is, is, uh, and I know Louise has the same habit, is I, I do it on a Sunday. That's when I do it. You could do it on a Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, it doesn't matter. I don't, I used to try to do it on Monday morning and that was not so good for me uh, because I was already into the week and I did, it, it wasn't the same planning mode. Um, and I felt rushed because I just wanted to get it done. So I now have it where if I can do it on a, on a Sunday, I can really take stock of what the week was about. I can look at all my danglers, as I call them, things that are still open-ended. I can kind of rein that in and then create what my plan is for next week. And that way I can start the, the Monday morning with a fresh plan and I can get right into action. So that would be my suggestion is to create time um, either on Friday night, Friday afternoon, or sometime over the weekend for you to do your 411. Any questions so far? How's everyone doing? Okay. Good? Okay. So here's where I disagree. Uh, every once in a while, I disagree with some stuff that KW teaches, and this is one of them. So the annual goals, of course, you're thinking about your big rocks. They're saying to identify five or seven key goals. I think that's a lot. I mean, unless those five or seven are spread out across those different categories where you're having like two in each one, then that, that I get. But just be careful that you're not creating this laundry list of stuff. And, and I think the more that we, uh, the more that we crowd our mind with all these goals, the less clear we get. And, and it's important that you can get into action. So, so that is my suggestion there. The same thing with the monthly goals. If you're breaking it down to different categories, then I understand the five to seven. But it, it really is about getting laser focused and, and it's the 80-20, the right? The less, um, the fewer things that you focus on, if they are high priority, they will bring you bigger results anyway. Weekly goals, as I said, plan one week at a time. Again, same thing, just make sure this is in relation to the other uh, number of items that you have. And here, um, you wanna jot these down or take a picture or screenshot here. These are the questions to ask yourself as you're creating the 411 every week. What do I want to accomplish? How will I achieve my goals? When am I going to accomplish these things? And number three is really important because you may realize that a project or task is bigger and may have to take more than a week to accomplish or a day, right? So you just need to ask yourself what, how, and when. Okay. Couple of other tips around time blocking. Um, don't confuse business with busyness. This goes back to the 80-20 rule too. You know, there are, there are days when you might feel like, whew, I got so much done, I was going all day long, and that's busyness sometimes. You have to examine if you were productive. That's the difference. So busyness is, is just filling your time with activities, but Business means you're being productive and you're getting closer to your goals. In order for you to really manage your, your behavior when it comes to time, it's about time blocking. And all that is is that you are blocking periods of time throughout your day to do a specific activity. And by doing that, you focus on your 20%, right, which are those big rocks or high priority items and you allow yourself to structure your day so you can move through it very, um, very time blocked. 
similar to, remember when we were in high school? We would get there, we would go, let's say to homeroom, the bell would ring, you'd move to English. You had a certain amount of time, you focused on English, the bell would ring, you would move again to another classroom for another specific period of time. You were no longer thinking about English for most of us. You were now thinking about math. That's how time blocking should work on your calendar. And you know what? The same stuff that tripped you up in high school is the same stuff that's going to trip you up here. If you're going to get distracted by the person next to you or something happening outside the window, then you're going to miss what's happening in English. The same way is those things are going to show up, at, you know, as an adult here with your calendar. So it's, it's blocking a specific amount of time to do a specific activity. And it's about getting laser clear, laser focused on what that is. So in other words, if you're going to say time block, I'm going to time block two hours for lead generation. That's great. If you want to be really successful at it, then you have to get clearer than that and say, so in those two hours, this is who I'm calling. Because otherwise you get into the two hour time period and you're like, okay, I'm going to be calling my spheres now. And uh, all right, so who should I call? Let me, let me look. Uh, oh, you know what? Let me go to my database and look that up. And the next thing you know, 45 minutes later, you're still trying to figure out who to call. So there also has to be time blocked for planning. Whatever you block the time for, you also have to protect it. So that's where managing yourself comes in because you have to be willing to stay focused on whatever that activity is and you cannot allow something else to get in the way. You have to be disciplined enough to say, that for the next hour that I have time blocked here, I'm not going to get up and vacuum. I am not going to answer the phone. I am not going to FaceTime with so-and-so. You know, I'll tell you, the other day, um, it was funny, two different days, one last week and one this week, my mother starts FaceTiming me and my best friend two different days. At one, like 11 o'clock, the other one was like 1 o'clock, and I ignored it. Then my same friend starts texting me, where are you? Is everything all right? I'm like, are you kidding me right now? So I called her quick. I'm like, I'm working. Oh, I guess I didn't think about that because everybody's home, right? So you have, to, you have to show people how to treat you and you have to set those expectations. So for some of you who are home working with children and other family members, you've got to communicate, you know, and, and you've got to be able to create some boundaries and structure through your time blocking. And you know what? You also have to be realistic too. Um, you know, most of us can't do something for two and three hours at a time. It's a lot. So you might have to time block a half hour or an hour and, and move to something else and then go back if it needs more time. Um, you have to just be realistic about your own operating system. But at the end of the day, you have to be committed to seeing the results. So this is a lot of mindset. This is a lot of building the right habits. Questions on that? comments, ahas, anything. Write these down, time blocking keys to success. You have to be purposeful. You have to put some thought into it. If you erase, you must replace. That is such an old uh, statement, but true. So in other words, you may have something that shows up and you have to decide, and some of us are better at this than others. Some, some can, can use discernment and some get a little tripped up in this, but you have to decide if the thing that just showed up is truly more important than what you were already going to be doing. If you feel it really is, fine, but if you're going to jump out of what you had planned to do or erase it to go do something else, you must replace it. So in other words, if I'm going to shorten my lead generation time by an hour because I decided that the person who just called me I have to deal with, I need to go to my calendar and move that hour somewhere else. Either the same day preferably or no later than the next morning. Because if it doesn't happen the same day or by the next morning, it's probably not going to happen. Right. Be diligent and be consistent. You know, time blocking, time management, it's all personal behavior, it's all habits, it's all up to you. It's, it's really a part of learning how to be someone who's thinking at a high level. For those of you um, who struggle with how you're using your time, 
Um, and if you want to do some kind of an analysis on how you're using your time and you want to compare the number of hours you're investing to the output that you're getting, then track what you're doing. We, full transparency, we all just did this with our leadership team. I'm doing an, an accountability sheet myself. And what we're doing is just this, we're just tracking how we're spending our day. And I think the, the value in this is that we're gonna be able to self-reflect and, and really look at how we're loading ourselves up. Are we spending more time on the 80% stuff and not on the 20% stuff? Are we um, able to tighten our time? Are we taking too long on certain tasks? That's another part of time management as well. We, we want to do things in an appropriate amount of time. And, you know, your activities will fit into whatever time you allow. So if you want to be productive in 20 minutes, you'll find a way. And if you want it to stretch out for two hours, you'll find a way. But the key, the key is knowing what is really required. Because as we get more efficient with how we use our time, we can get through more of the high priority items and actually see us start to create momentum towards our goals, maybe even excel over our goals. So tracking your time and how you use it can be a really great tool. Um, I, I gave you an example of not taking phone calls. Sometimes we have to really, as I said, show people how to treat us. And we may have to say no sometimes. Um, Keep in mind, no is a complete sentence. It doesn't require anything else, right? It doesn't require a lot of explanation and a lot. Sometimes you just have to look at someone. And of course you have to know who you can say that to. Uh, when Rosemary calls me, it's very few times I'm like, no, but, it, but I do say it, I'm not gonna lie. I have said to her, I can't do that right now. Is it, can I do that for you later? Oh, absolutely. So you have to be willing to communicate, okay? but you do have to have a viable alternative. Like I said, you can't just be flat out, no, it could be. Um, so I'm, I'm working on something that I think is a high priority for me right now, is whatever you're asking me to do, something I can do for you like at four o'clock today? Yeah, oh, that's no problem. Okay, then I created an alternative. So it's taking control of your calendar. Sometimes in order to maximize our productivity, we also have to know how to delegate. When you do, if you have that ability, some of you work alone as a solopreneur, you may not have the ability to delegate. These would be some tips with delegation. So um, for anyone on the leadership team, anyone who's running a team, this would be a slide I might say, take a picture of or screenshot. All right, I'm going to go right into, oh, they don't have a sample. Okay. All right, let's go into, everyone can still see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to show you, um, I think that um, Eileen um, put a blank copy of a 411 on the website, so you may want to check that out. But what I want to do is go to mykw.kw.com. We still see your uh, presentation. I don't know if you were I, looking for us to see I the internet. I just changed it. Can you see me logging in now? Not yet. No. Uh, let me share. Nope. Hold on. Please hold. Okay. Do you see my uh, KW now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is uh, mykw.kw.com. And when you log in here, from what I can tell right now, the 411, the on, there's an online tool for you to use to create your 411. I don't believe it's been moved to KW Connect. It's still here, from what I understand. This is where I go in still every week, as you can see. So all you have to do is come to the search bar here and type in 411. Then you're going to click here, 411 Tools. 
And this is the link. Even though it looks like it is on Connect, we'll have to figure that out later. Maybe we can get there. Uh, you're going to go to the online 401 tool. I think this is actually new in the last week. How fun. Um, by the way, here is a sample. Oh, this is, you know, let me, in the essence of time, can you, you can still see the three here? Yeah. Okay, so, so these are some samples. And then the other thing that you'll find on this page is another, um, you know, like an overview of how to do the 411. Okay, and then you see down here some resources and FAQs. So you can also learn um, how to use the actual form I'm gonna go into now, and just some more things about creating it. And if you wanna do it, um, as a Word document, you can download it here. If you want to download a PDF version, you can that you want to print out and write on. I mean, I don't know why you would, but you could. Um, and then, so there's a business format, there's a personal format, and there's a combined format. So um, you can choose which format. But again, you want to choose an accountability partner who can go over this with you. So back up here, what you're going to do is go to the online 411 tool. And here is my 411 that I've, that I've been working on for March. So you get to see all my secrets now. Um, so here are the goals for the company. Here are my personal goals. Yeah, I have a big weight goal. We'll just cover that up right now. Uh, <laughs> a weight loss goal. But what I'm doing is I'm working on this each month and then I'm coming in and I'm doing my goals. And as you can see, I was a bad girl and I have not done my 411 with well, ever since the craziness happened. You can see this, this is me being vulnerable. This is why we have to have an accountability partner. Um, because with all the craziness, Rosemary hasn't held me accountable to it and neither is my coach. So that's where this ebbs and flows, right? So, but you can see the value in being able to list out right here on this 411, you know, how, how you, you can format it right here online. So there are instructions on that screen before this, and all you have to do is type it in and hit add. You can move things around, you can mark them complete, you can throw them in the garbage. So this is one way to do it online. The other way would be, I can't go back. The other way would, you still see the screen? Okay. The other way would be to, you know, download it in your computer over here. Is the download coming up? Do you see word opening? Okay, hold on, new share. You see it now? Yep. So that, that would be another way to do it. I did it this way for a long time um, and you would just download it. This is, um, I think the business one I opened up and you can share it to your computer. So let me just talk to you a little bit more before we run out of time. I think our time is up about the accountability partner. The key to this is that when you can send this to someone every week and they can talk to you about what you're putting on the 411, those conversations can open up into strategy sessions and planning sessions and celebrations. And when you know that you have someone who's willing to talk to you about it, you're gonna follow through and do the 411 every week. If you're just sending the 411 and we're not talking about what you're working on every week or your 20% every day, then you know we do huddles every day with the staff and those huddles should mirror what's on the 411. Imagine if we never had those conversations, you know, we could easily stay off track or not really be focused. So it's really the partnership with someone else that makes this come to life. So it's 12 o'clock, but before I let you all go, I'm just curious um, if you could please share your ahas with each other, uh, what you learned today, what you're hoping to implement, anything at all. I love the feedback. So can I hear from a couple of you? I like the accountability and kind of now that we're all kind of working just the way we are, putting these into place for moving forward. Yeah. Kind of getting it, you know, this is the time to kind of prepare and yeah. say, okay, we're going to start to implement these things, put them into place, and these are going to become 
our goals and just everything like literally, you know, accountability, accountability is the key so, word. Absolutely. So Linda, you have to decide who your accountability partner will be. I, I would think for you being a top producer at your level, you know, you really need to think about hiring a coach. So maybe it's a maps coach. Uh, I mean, you could work with your team leader uh, and you can still consult with your team leader, but you know how I feel about coaching. And so yes. if I can help, if I can help you with anything, let me know. But I think that, you know, especially during a tumultuous time like this, we need to know we have the support and the continuity of consistent, you know, coaching and, and those check-ins. So that would be my suggestion. Yes. And, and I'll, I'll make a comment because I just, I do have a coach and my coach was just changed recently and this was holding me to the fire. You know? Ah, ah, yeah. A uh, difference already. Yeah, yeah, there is a difference, and it's but it's not being done uh, in a way like you know, Louise, you screwed up again this week. It's being done in a sense of I want to move you forward, and the only way to move forward is by taking baby steps. You know, yeah. You, when you try to tackle it all, it it will go, you know, then it becomes overwhelming. But so there are specific things that I have to say, okay, I have to do this now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, accountability, it, the right relationship around mm -hmm. accountability really shows you that someone cares about you hitting your goal. It yeah, matters. It, and it, you know, it's not saying that one coach is better than another. It's just being, it's who's better for you. And yeah. that's why sometimes you, you need to work through that. So, yeah. you know, but I want to Are you say, sending your coach your 411? I guess uh, she didn't ask for it yet, but I guess I should. Yeah, do it because I was never necessarily, well, I had one coach who asked me, but I, I send my coach and Rosemary my 411 every week. And um, that makes a big difference for, for coaching sometimes. So go mm -hmm. ahead and do that. It builds the okay. relationship too. Uh, we have time for another aha uh -huh or two. Anybody else? Lori says she's going to reach out to a productivity coach. So Lori McDermott, in our market center, you want to call uh, Rita Gildersleeve. Um, Aaron, if you could type Rita's email maybe in there for her, Rita M at kw.com. And uh, that's someone that can help you for sure. Anyone else? Yeah, I'm going to get my um, probably a productivity coach to work right now. Awesome. Yeah, I think I need that. I need motivation. Yeah. I think, yes, yes. Well, I think motivation, we don't have time for this, but motivation comes from you. What you need is um, accountability. You need well, someone who- I, I guess it's, that's a word, accountability. Yeah, you need accountability because the motivation comes from within, right? But then we need someone who can say, okay, then Rocio, what is it that you want to accomplish? You figure out your goals and they're going to hold you accountable to it. And that, One moment. that actually keeps you more motivated. So that's thank awesome. You. I love that. I thank love you. Thank that. you. I love it. All right, everyone, thank you for joining me. Um, this recording will be shared out there. And um, if you have any more questions about the 401, just reach out. I really appreciate you being here. And I really encourage you to get into this habit because it is something that has changed my world, really, when I got clear about what I have to accomplish every week. So have a good one. I'll see you soon.